happy Book of Boba Fett day to every single one of you guys. This was the penultimate episode before we get the finale next week. I was hoping for another great episode. And this one, I got a lot of feelings for. Some feelings that absolutely made me almost jump right out of my seat from excitement and scream. And others that makes me feel just more frustrated with this Boba Fett show than loving it. Because I was in the camp of liking it, and now it's just like, where's the character of Boba Fett? He showed up in nothing in the last episode, and in this episode, he showed up for like a minute. <laughs> so there's a lot of thoughts running through me, but this is the most important conversation, is getting your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So leave a comment. What are your guys' thoughts on the book of Boba Fett so far, as well as episode six? And as well, guys, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, because this is the way to hit that button, as well if the force is running through you, or maybe you're a Mandalorian this is the channel for you guys because I love talking geeky content over here on a daily basis. Overall, time to dump, jump into this episode with full spoiler thoughts. So, overall, we knew we were going to see Mandalorian. We knew we were going to see his little friend Grogu. And that probably, per se, was going to shift us over to Luke Skywalker. But we also saw fucking freaking off my favorite bounty hunter of all time, Cad Bane, finally makes his live action appearance. There was rumors that Dave Filoni had done this episode, which the second I saw that directed by Dave Filoni, I was like, yep, makes sense. Because we also got Ahsoka in here. We got Cad Bane, of course, and making his live action debut, which was just spectacular. And a lot of you guys know that I, like if you followed me for a while, especially through my whole coverage of Boba Fett, I have been saying Cad Bane will show up. I will be shocked if he doesn't. And he finally did, and I'm so happy I was right in that. I was, I'm just jumping for joy, but we'll, well, I'm getting way too ahead of myself. Of course, the episode opens up, gives us Cobb Vanth, taking out some Pike members. And it was pretty cool to see Timothy Olyphant showing back up, because I like him as Cobb Vanth. I thought he was a great introduction in the original, or the second season for The Mandalorian. But of course, the episode picks back up. Din is flying out, and he's heading to where Master Luke is is which there's a lot of cool things so first he sees r2d2 r2d2 takes him to his little spot these droids make this little seat or bed for him and of course we see this dome this building which is very reminiscent of the building from last jedi from certain flashbacks from master luke's school so very much so i would assume these are the same planet again i could be wrong but i don't know why he would make a completely different school on a different planet so that's what I'm going to be going with. But of course, he lays down. Then it cuts to Luke and Grogu having their training sessions, of course. And I loved it. Now, I will give credit where this is. The CGI for Luke in Mandalorian Season 2 was a bit off, but it was good. This one was, at times, fantastic and almost unnoticeable. And then sometimes he would talk and it would be a little bit iffy here and there. But still, it is fascinating how they are able to really push this technology to that next level but guys oh i dropped that but we got all oh, baby baby grogu he's back he's back guys he, he's back and i'm so 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 happy to have baby grogu back in here learning the ways of the forest with the frog and everything of that nature and cutting back because a lot of stuff happens on this planet i was actually quite surprised to see how much time we got with grogu and luke in a sense it goes back to my thoughts for a second i didn't even think we were going to go back to din and the boa fett story i i truly did not and i was getting a little bit hesitant when i see that there's only 20 minutes left of the show including credits and we're still with master luke and baby yoda or of course grogu and for me in that sequence, of course, Din's laying there, pulls his rifle out, and I'm like, oh, it's going to be Luke. Nope, it's Ahsoka. What? Which, again, Ahsoka's my favorite Star Wars character of all time, so that also really got me excited to see that Rosario Dawson is there. Can't wait for her show. But I like that interaction. They continued their dialogue, and very much her telling her, telling him, like, hey, like, if you go say hi to him, I'm not going to stop you. But it could stop all progression that he's made. But, you know... I can give him the gift. And of course, a lot of you guys were right. It was a chain mail. I was thinking of something completely different. Maybe it was going to be a lightsaber, a Mandalorian armor. I thought it was really cool that that's what it was made for him. But what did he choose? I guess we'll talk about that in a second. But the rest of the episode pretty much didn't leaves and goes back into his Naboo Starfighter, which I love that that's his ship, flies back to Tatooine, and we spend a little bit more time on here. Some dialogue moments between Luke and, of course, Ahsoka, which was awesome because we've never gotten that before. And I just love that, you know, some of the references to, of course, how she's reminded of Anakin, which, again, some Clone Wars stuff. But one of the big things, one of my favorite moments is in this, is when we get a little bit look at Grogu's past. Master Luke tries to remind him. We see clone troopers, which that sequence was 
freaking awesome. I want more Clone Trooper stuff. I think we're going to get a Clone Trooper flashbacks in the Obi-Wan show, which I think will be very intense. But again, he's seeing these three Jedi protecting him, but who did continue to protect him? I imagine that there is still one Jedi out there that did protect him and made sure he did not die in this moment. But of course, seeing the clones, everything like that, it really much was PTSD for Grogu. And I think that just continues his journey. Now, before we jump back to Tatooine, I do want to finish my conversation here on this planet with Luke and Grogu because the other thing is is at the end you know it comes down to this we see Grogu flipping and doing jumps and flips and using the force and stuff like that and he's progressing very well but then there comes the one thing we see a chest and he pulls out the little thing that Din had made for him and he says here if you pick this you're gonna go back to your friend but if you want to be a Jedi you will pick this and he pulls out a lightsaber it's a tiny one and it's green. And for a second, I thought, is that Yoda's? Then he says it's Master Yoda's. And I squealed because that's awesome. That is freaking awesome. I was hoping that Grogu would end up building his own lightsaber. But still, nonetheless, that is awesome. Perfection. The way they did that. I loved it. I didn't even think for a second, where is Master Yoda's lightsaber? It was perfect. We don't know what he chose. Deep down, I think he chose Din. And I'm saying that because I think he chose Din... And Din and him are going to make his own lightsaber eventually. Maybe Din will train him in the Force. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. I've been wrong in the past. But let me know down below what your guys' thoughts are on that. But of course, flashing forward, let's head over to Tatooine now. Because let's finish out the story. Din arrives, goes back up, sees what the plan's going on. They're pretty much laying out, this is what we need to do. You know, we got Chrysanthemum. We have Din now. They're the Enforcers. You guys have been mapping out the area. Yada, 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 yada. We need to get some muscle. Din thinks I got an idea, which, again, leaves us back to Cod Vanth. He goes there. They have this night dialect with one another. Pretty much tells him what the offer is. He leaves, gets in his ship, flies off, and you see this figure out in the distance. And in that very moment, I nearly shit my pants because I sat there. Like I've said, if you guys have watched me, I'm a huge Cad Bane fan. He's my favorite bounty hunter of all time. Well, Din's starting to get up there, but... I loved him in Clone Wars, and I've been waiting for his live-action debut. I had a, such a big feeling that he was going to be in Boba Fett, and here it was. He's sitting there, he's walking up, and I, the second I saw the silhouette of the cowboy hat, I said, if this ain't Cad Bane, I'm going to scream. And if it is Cad Bane, I'm going to scream even louder in excitement, and it was. You see the voice, you hear, you see the little um, vents coming up, you see the blue skin, and Cobb Vanth and him are having this dialogue, and it's just becoming that Old West type of sequence, and boom, kills the guy up there, maybe kills Cobb Vanth. I would be shocked if he died, but also leaves a lot of devastation to show how powerful Cad Bane is, so I'm going to go right now that he is dead, and walks out, pretty much just saying, fine, don't take the deal. And it just shows the ruthlessness of Cad Bane. And next episode is going to be insane with that. The war is coming with the Pikes. And I hope we do get that. Because at the end of the episode, we see an explosion go off. At that, uh, not can I guess, yeah, Cantina. And the Pikes left the bomb there. Which I knew it was going to be. It was too reminiscent of like stuff from like Goodfellas and Casino. And any other sort of mobster thing. Which very much Book of Boba Fett has had parallels to that. And in that moment, I was like, yeah, this is it. So speaking about my cons, I just wish we had more of Boba Fett. I feel like the writing for it has been so off because we had so much of him in the first half. And now these last two episodes, last episode we had nothing. This episode, again, nothing progressing. That story really much, just these small, subtle things. I do wish that maybe this show should have been called like Tales of the Mandalorian or something like that, where it touches on characters from Mandal Mando and everything like that, catching us up with Din, catching us up with Boba Fett, catching us up with Fennec, catching us up with Cobb Vanth, and catching us up with Grogu and Luke Skywalker and all that sorts of things, and then leading into what is going on. You know, I think that could have been awesome for like a 12-piece episode, or just in general, Book of Boba Fett should have been longer, or maybe shorter and condensed. I just, there's so many different things. I'm definitely going to be doing a full season review, but right now it does feel a little bit weird that this is still called the Book of Boba Fett. And I hope next week still establishes more of that than focusing more on Din. It feels like these last two episodes have really much been about Din, which don't get me wrong. I love the Mandalorian, but I, I very much wanted to love more of Boba Fett. Tomorrow Morrison's great in the role. Fennec Shan is awesome, but 
that's just kind of my perspective. Overall, as a giant Star Wars fan, I flipped out about this episode. Lots of cameos. Ahsoka, Luke, Grogu, Din. Of course, again, we get Cad Bane finally getting his introduction. Cobb Vanth. So many big surprises. So much big smiling inducing things. And so many Easter eggs as well to dissect. Again, fans who want to see more of Boba Fett, I can imagine, are probably disappointed. Fans who don't really care and just want more of Mando, I can understand that. I'm in the middle. I want more of Boba Fett, but I'm also really excited to progress and see where Din's story is going and where all that is going. So, of course, guys, I'm going to leave it to you guys. Leave a comment down below what your theories, thoughts happening next week. Again, hit that like and subscribe button so we can keep talking all that. And, of course, until next time, stay classy. And remember, this is the way.